This past Friday, Vincent Kennedy McMahon retired from WWE. Like fillings from a back alley dentist. That feels a bit weird in my mouth. Let's take you through an unbelievable day in WWE history. One that the likelihood of seeing, we thought, until now, there was no chance in hell. As final logistical movements were made ahead of SmackDown at the TD Garden in Boston, there was some good news from WWE HQ. Triple H is back. Paul Levesque is the new EVP of Talent Relations, taking over from John Laurinaitis, who I guess we're now wishing best of luck with his future endeavours, pal. I look forward to returning to my prior position as head of Talent Relations. I'm healthy, fired up, and ready to take charge, says Trips, presumably as Beautiful Day by U2 plays in the background. What we didn't know at the time was that the game was about to change one more time that day, in a way that we couldn't have predicted. On Friday, just after 4 p.m. local time, Vince McMahon went to Twitter. He hadn't posted on the Bird app, I think since May 19th, what would have been Andre the Giant's 76th birthday, Maybe that's what Kane was scared of. Anyway, the tweet was one that, in terms of size and impact, metaphorically dwarfed Andre. It was a tweet that, according to PW Insider, was one that Vince McMahon had been preparing to write for about 10 days, with only a select few people in the know. It went, and I'm sure you know by now, at 77, time for me to retire. Thank you, WWE Universe. Then, now, forever, together. Hashtag WWE, hashtag thankful. Got to get that algorithm in, otherwise nobody will see that tweet. As press release came, came out following that, we got a longer goodbye from WWE's former COO. As I approach 77 years old, it is time for me to retire from WWE. Throughout the years, it's been a privilege to help WWE bring you joy, inspire you, thrill you, surprise you, and always entertain you. I'd like to thank all my family for mightily contributing to our success. And I would also like to thank all our past and present superstars and employees for their dedication and passion for our brand. Most importantly, I would like to thank our fans for allowing us into your homes every week and being your choice of entertainment. I hold the deepest appreciation and admiration for our generations of fans all over the world who have liked, currently like, and sometimes even love our form of sports entertainment. Our global audience can take comfort in knowing that WWE will continue to entertain you with the same fervor, dedication and passion as always. I am extremely confident in the continued success of WWE and I leave our company in capable hands of an extraordinary group of superstars, employees and executives. In particular, both chairwoman and co-CEO Stephanie McMahon and co-CEO Nick Khan. As the majority shareholder, I will continue to support WWE in any way I can. My personal thanks to our community and business partners, shareholders and board of directors for their guidance and support through the years. Then, now, forever, together. A slightly longer goodbye from Vince McMahon. Cue from this social media immediately becoming engulfed in OMGs, WTFs and TTFNs with Vince McMahon, Vince and Vinnie Mac all trending worldwide on Twitter. Sentimentality from current and former WWE stars started cutting through, as did speculation from reporters and fans alike regarding the timing of his retirement. AEW's Tony Khan even stopped by and was so busy reading tweets that he forgot to read the room. Thanks to you, wrestling fans, and your great support of AEW, I'm grateful to now be the longest tenured CEO in pro wrestling. That was followed by a plug for Rampage that night. Brian Alvarez reported that that just before they announced it to the world, a message was sent to the talents confirming Vince McMahon's WWE departure. The message was much more jovial and informal in delivery. It was actually shared on Reddit by verified insider Kermit125. And it feels the same as the press release, just a little bit more informal. To all WWE superstars, as I approach 77 years old, OMG, am I really that old? I feel it's time for me to retire. No longer will you see the smiling, docile, level-headed, calm presence at Gorilla every week. Your dedication to WWE will ensure that our company will continue to grow and prosper. Our organization is nothing without you. You are WWE's only natural resource chosen to perform in front of a global audience. You are all 
WWE Global Ambassadors. Carry the WWE flag wherever you go. Wave it high and proud. And bust your ass to be all you can be, be as a person and as a performer. One other thing. I won't be with you, but I'll be watching. Remember to keep your hands up, grab a hold, and sell. By the way, SmackDown airs live tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central on Fox. Following Vince's plug for both retirement and SmackDown, an all-hands-on-deck meeting was scheduled for the top of the hour. This was confirmed by multiple industry insiders. Talent at SmackDown went into meeting rooms, and those not present were told to join via Zoom. Now, the meeting itself merely a formality to confirm that yes Vince McMahon was indeed retiring and it was business as usual for one superstar though business wouldn't be as usual and as the night wore on we found out more and more about that particular superstar and their status now reports filtered out from the garden in Boston that an angry Brock Lesnar who had been heavily advertised for Smackdown once he caught wind of Vince McMahon's retirement had left the building. Sources close to Brian Alvarez say a phrase to the beats of, if he's gone, I'm gone, were reportedly some of Lesnar's final words. If he's gone, then I'm gone. Vince and Lesnar had a very close-knit relationship, as Brock has opened up about in the past. It wasn't just the feature attraction for SmackDown that had reportedly grabbed his bags and went home. One half of the main event of SummerSlam on July the 30th. Now, Brock Lesnar had barely got into his car and banged in disc three of 101 country music hits in the CD player, allegedly, before SummerSlam substitute speculation started spreading. Talk between many people online began of overtures being made towards Goldberg. Conveniently, earlier in the week, Goldberg had revealed how he staved off having surgery in case the phone rang from Titan Towers. A phone call that all of a sudden, in this moment, seemed more likely to be made. If not Goldberg, maybe they could pull John Cena off the set of whatever movie he's working on, which I think at the moment is Wile E. Coyote. That's a thing that's in development, uh, a live action version of Wile E. Coyote. Sadly, John Cena's not playing Wile E. Coyote. But the show must go on as that carries on. Bruce Pritchard picked up the baton from Vince McMahon, taking over his TV duties which no doubt led to Conrad Thompson frantically reworking his podcast diary as this happens. SmackDown is getting rewritten at this point from the ground up. It opens with Stephanie McMahon leading the WWE Universe in a rousing chant of thank you, Vince. This is immediately followed from, uh, pro from this, from a Street Profits conversation with the Usos, Theory and Mad Cat Moss that itself led to a six-man tag team match for our seemingly new main event for the night. Vince's farewell was that 60-second bit from Stephanie McMahon. Vince has had a strange relationship with public appearances over the past few years. He hates being referenced in Hall of Fame speeches. But when the media's eyes were on him recently, he was popping out on Raw and SmackDown for seemingly no real reason. I believe if he'd lasted another week, he might have popped out and said that there's good parking around the corner if you're still arriving. The last few have almost been in defiance towards people who thought he would shrink into the vanishing point when it comes to these appearances. But this is something that he's now choosing of his own violation, of his own volition to do. One thing that was apparent as SmackDown rolled on was the change in tone for commentary. It was looser, it was more organic, and even gave us a peek through the crack in the forbidden door with Xavier Woods dropping references to Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling. A lot of the conversation online turned not to what Michael Cole and Pat McAfee were saying, but rather what they weren't saying. As many, including myself, considered that if Brock Lesnar was truly following Vince McMahon out of the door, would we have the same energy in chastising Brock as we did Sasha Banks and Naomi? Now, of course, by the end of the night, we would see the full picture. But this was certainly a loud conversation on social media as SmackDown wore on. The show would end with Theory putting a beating on Mad Cat Moss with his Money in the Bank briefcase until Brock Lesnar's music hit. The crowd erupted as Michael Cole and Pat McAfee even addressed that until about 19 seconds ago, there was an elephant in the room about Brock Lesnar. The show ended with Lesnar battering Theory and hitting some refreshing F5s. Fightful Select 
Wrestling Observer and many other outlets reported that Brock Lesnar did indeed walk out of SmackDown when Vince's signing off was announced. But for now, it looks like some steam was let off and the wheels are back in motion for SummerSlam. Goldberg's phone has not rung and the last man standing main event is still on. The story seems to be that Brock, hearing that Vince was leaving, saw red and took off before cooler heads prevailed and he returned to do the show. The show was written in such a way that if he didn't come back, it wouldn't be too obvious that he wasn't there. In a way, I'm pretty sure Vince McMahon would have wanted his sort of final night to go this way. Like the day he retired, something more shocking and eye-catching takes center stage and gets everyone talking about SmackDown, but not about him. I, I've got to admit, that's, that's quite the turn up for Vince McMahon, and it certainly got everybody talking about wrestling, myself and many others included. Now, we look ahead to the weeks, the months, and the years to come without Vince McMahon as the head of the WWE Universe. Something that we only assumed would happen when, when, well, the actual universe deemed it so. In the weeks to come, we'll see Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan begin their double-headed duty of running the company to bigger and brighter things. We will see Bruce Pritchard taking on more of Vince's day-to-day -day tasks. Probably not the 4 a.m. workouts, though. And who, who's doing that, seriously? And as per Vince's wishes, business will go on. Now, as the months go on, don't be surprised if there is some sense of a tonal shift for the product. The shift from the PG era to the TV 14 presentation, a new power structure with different ideas. This should give us quite a different tasting weekly TV tussle by the time we get to the end of 2022. As for Vince McMahon, well, goes without saying, this is the end of a huge era, not just in WWE, but wrestling in general. When Vince McMahon Jr. was given the keys to the former Capital Wrestling Corporation kingdom, he had a vision to bring wrestling into the light. And through a series of tradition obliterating events, he did just that and turned the wrestling into an entertainment dynasty. For the first time in pretty much all of our lives, we're looking at a wrestling future without Vince McMahon. Now, retirement life may not be all about pottering around in the garden, doing the big shop, and finally fixing that squeaky cupboard door. Now, because Vince McMahon logging off comes at a time when there's a lot of questions about his personal life. Misconduct allegations that have been reportedly costing him millions of dollars in hush money. And it'll see Vince McMahon riding into the sunset with some dark clouds overhead. These legal situations will not go away now that Vince is sat on the porch. Chances are Vince's retirement, at least the first stretch of it, will be incredibly busy, dealing with very different paperwork to a raw running order. And this isn't paperwork that he can just throw out if he doesn't like it. We'll have more on this continuing story of the retirement of Vince McMahon here at Cultaholic throughout the weeks to come. Stay safe and love you, bye.